We're the Indie Project, B and Theo, and we've been living and travelling the world in vans for the past six years. We're currently renovating an abandoned stone barn in Portugal to turn into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cats, Gingy Bear and Fernando. Follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to a brand new video here on our land in sunny central Portugal. It's a beautiful morning, it's super early and you can hear the leaves rustling in the wind and the birds chirping. It really is beautiful at this time of year. And I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Amaze who have sponsored this video and I'll talk more about that later. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, this video has been kindly sponsored by Amaze and they're giving you the chance to win an incredible prize of a brand new Airstream Caravel and a Ford F-150 to tow it with. This is the ultimate adventure setup and it's great for trips with your friends and family and it's a home away from home. It comes with a memory foam mattress, spacious kitchen and pet friendly seating. You can easily hitch it to the all new Ford F-150 with fantastic towing and fuel efficiency and you're ready to go. The trailer tow package includes all the necessary equipment to smoothly tow your new Airstream. The best thing is your donations go towards the Independence Fund who are a charity dedicated to empowering and improving the lives of veterans and their families. As you guys know, me and B absolutely love traveling and this is such an incredible prize. So for your chance to potentially win a brand new Airstream Caravel and a Ford F-150 to tow it with, head to amaze.com forward slash indie projects. So the first thing on my to-do list this morning is to check all of our animals and make sure they're all fed and watered and everything's okay. The chicken coop looks a bit funny this morning because we've actually got our washing hanging up on the outside. This is super rustic farm lifestyle, but this is what you gotta do when it's really windy and it's the only place where it wouldn't blow off. This is what happens if you leave your clothes on one of these stands when it's super windy. Everything's just on the floor. I'll pick that up so no, uh, no spiders and anything wants to try and live in there. It's a lot less windy today, so that should be able to stay up on its own. Good morning, chickaroos. How you all doing this morning? You look okay, don't you? We recently set up this shade netting for the summer months, which is really helping keep this area nice and cool. They got a nice through breeze. They're at the top of the land where it's most windy. And yeah, they seem to be having a great time and in about 45 minutes, I'll let them out to free range. So I've just come down to the barn and I'm gonna start some work on it really soon, but before I get into that, I really want to get serious with you guys and talk about mental health and stuff that's been going on. The last couple of days, uh, things have got quite serious and B is not in a, in a good state at all. Mental health wise, it's really not good. She, she needs a complete break. So I'm gonna do everything possible that I can to help her get better that's my priority she's she's an unbelievable woman she really is she's she's just amazing super hard worker really just gets on with stuff and sometimes you need to just take a break and it all just got a bit too much uh, probably two or three days ago and uh, yeah, it's evident that she needs a break. She needs, she needs to relax. She needs time off from building, from filming, and everything all just got a bit much. And sometimes when you're in that mind frame, and you can't kind of see a way out, then you start doing things that you might regret. 
It's absolutely devastating to see how she is right now and all I want is for her to get better and we've never spoken about it on here before. But she has struggled for years with depression and other problems and the pandemic really hasn't helped that, you know, there was there was massive life decisions that we've made over the last year. There's massive changes going on in our lives with things that we've done and things we were gonna do and Everything's been incredibly stressful and tough. Alongside building the house and filming the whole project, I mean, it's a lot of work and there's so much going on behind the scenes that you guys don't see. And she's an incredibly hard worker and, you know, she's she finds it hard to take a break just like me. And I think now's the time that she needs to take the break and just take some time out and really take this time to heal. So, you know, send your, send your love to B in the comments and I'll make sure that I read some of the lovely comments out to her. Try and perk her up a little bit, but ultimately time is gonna be the healer. That was incredibly tough to talk through, but I'm glad I did. I'm glad I got it off my chest and I'm happy that you guys now know what the situation is. I'm always honest with you. This is a very real vlog. If we have ups, we talk about them. If we have downs, we talk about them. This is real life. We are not actors. So yeah, I'm glad that's off my chest, like I said. and. You know, I'm feeling a little bit more positive. I've just sat down in the sun for 10 minutes, had a drink and just sat and looked over our beautiful land. It's just stunning here. The birds chirping, the summer's here. If a little hot, are gorgeous. And I forgot to mention that one of the things that bees really struggled with as well is not being able to see her family. It's been a year and a half now because of the pandemic that she's not been able to see them. So one thing I'm looking into is trying to figure out a way that we can get back to the UK just for a little bit so that we can see our families and I think that would really help her a lot. The problem is right now is there's um, a two week quarantine so if you guys know any ways around that or if you hear about anything changing please let us know. So inside the barn looks a lot different to the last time that you guys saw it. So you can see already up there, I've managed to fill in all between every single rafter on that side and it's looking really good. I ended up doing a lot more dubbing out than I thought I was gonna do on this wall because in the end, 
it was just so pitted. So you can see here, I've gone up from the bottom, well, from the top down, and I've established where the end is gonna be, all the way down here. This is gonna be the end of the plastered wall. And then obviously, like I've mentioned before, this whole massive wall of the gable end is gonna be pointed. So it's gonna be a really nice contrast of stone, wood, and then the white wall there. And you can see here, this is looking really funky. I really like it. You can see how it's gonna look around the surround. And this is a dubbing out coat. This is not a first coat, but you can see I've had to fill the whole area. And that's because the wall was just in such bad condition. So I've managed to straighten it out a lot. You can see down here, the same thing needs to happen today. Here, it's hard to tell really how kind of wonky and pitted this wall is, but I've had great success with what I've done there. So I'm just gonna carry on doing that. I'm gonna start up here first and make sure that's straightened out a little bit and carry on all the way along to the end of this wall. And this is the sole purpose today is to get this wall completely dubbed out it's really started to warm up right now 33 degrees today at least it's a lot cooler in the barn so it, it tends to be when you're outside doing a mix you're really hot and sweaty but when you get in here and you acclimatize and you just still and calm down a little bit and you're not moving around so much that actually you cool down a little bit and you can work quite a few hours throughout the day, which is good because you're in the shade. So I know you guys are probably wondering why is this plastering take so long? Well, lime, it has to cure, it has to, it has to dry out. So I have to wait at least three days between coats. It's warm enough here in Portugal at the moment that three days is fine. Usually I'd say maybe five days to seven days. It depends what type of lime you're using, but this NHL 3.5 is drying out in this heat nicely. It's not too quick. It's just about right. There's no cracking or anything, which is really good. And it's going on really nicely. But I just wanted to give you guys an idea of scale because it may look like a small barn, but it's very, very tall. And <laughs> there's a lot of walls to plaster. So let me walk back and I'll stand next to the wall and you'll be able to see the kind of scale that we're dealing with because I'm sure a lot of you guys haven't seen it from this angle before. If I just step back here, I'm six foot three and you can see the scale of what we're dealing with here. It's a really big, huge walls in fact to, to get done. So this is gonna be a big pointing job after I've done the plastering and then as soon as the plastering and pointing is done we are on the home straight as soon as that's done we can start getting the floors down the insulation the floor down and essentially we can start to move in after that rising sun hits the sky see it open before us take these hopes hold them high every step takes you closer just finished the first wheelbarrow full of lime mix and I'm really happy with it. I'm getting quicker and quicker as the day goes by. I'm gonna have a break now because it's lunchtime. So I'm gonna grab some lunch, sit down, enjoy a cold can of Coke and just watch the view for a little while. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you what I've actually done. So check this out. You can see the darker area is where I've done so down here all the way around the window there and across so I've achieved quite a lot in one mix and a fairly short amount of time that's definitely the quickest 
I've done an area like that which is really good and you can see I've scored it all off here so the next first coat can go on top of that nicely it's nice and rough and then after lunch I just need to tackle along here into this corner and then up where the mezzanine uh, meets the wall so yeah I think that's really good so far and it just it's already transforming it just seeing it covered like if I show you there it looks completely covered it's really cool and I love now how the beams just come straight out of the mortar so for lunch I've got pasta salad some potatoes and a falafel wrap I'm just gonna sit here for a minute enjoy the view off the veranda give me, give me that I've just done the second mix of the day. I'm hoping I can manage to complete the wall with just two mixes today, but we'll see. It'd be annoying if I got to do a third, but it is what it is. And I'm going to be tackling this area here under the mezzanine. It's quite crazy to think when we first saw this barn and the visions that we had for it and we always knew that we wanted to kind of plaster these walls and keep this as a big feature wall on the gable end and now we're here it's just crazy to think back and this morning while I was doing all this plastering I was just thinking back through my mind about how far we've come and all the different bits that we've that we've had to achieve to get here and you know it's been a it's been a massive journey for sure but you know we're building our own house it's very rewarding I think it's not really going to hit us until we're actually living in it and we can sit in here and be like we did this and I think that's going to be a really really lovely moment That's my third mix that I've done. I was really hoping I could get it done in two, but I ran out, so I had to just go and put another mix on. I've just done like three quarters of a mix. I didn't need a whole full mix, but yeah, better get on with it. I'm nearly there, the home straight. Just got a quarter more to do. I'm going to work top down like I usually do because if you work from the bottom up then you're just going to have mortar falling off your trowel or whatever and going onto the work that you've just done so you always want to go 
from top to bottom. That's what I've found best anyway. I flipping did it. Look at that guys. Completed the dubbing out on this wall. It's massive. And now that's done, that can have a first coat in three days time once it's gone off and dry. Three days, one more coat, and then one final coat after that. But it looks really nice. I'm absolutely knackered. I was up at 5 a.m and now it's 6 p.m. so it's been a long day so far. I'm so happy with the progress. Just battle through today and managed to achieve so much. So I'm just gonna keep doing that every single day until this plastering is done. And right now I'm so sweaty and dirty and covered in lime. I just wish I was in the lake. And just like that, I'm in the lake and it feels so good to be submerged in cold water it really does after such a long day building through the blistering heat but it was well worth it because I achieved so much and I also had a lot of time to think and I'm actually feeling really positive about the whole situation it's been a really rocky couple of days for sure but things can only get better and B's going to take a step back from everything and I'm going to take on the social media and all the other bits and pieces that we do behind the scenes to give B a complete break. That's exactly what she needs, just pure relaxation. No building, you know, no social media, no filming the vlogs. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different and thank you so much to all your lovely comments. They've they're so supportive always and they really keep us going, they really do and it does feel like we're on the home straight with the build now. I'm excited to bring you guys along for kitting out the whole inside of the barn. I know it's going to be such an amazing tiny house when we're finished. Also make sure you check out amaze.com forward slash indie projects or click the link in our description to win the prize.